this is Greg Aaron with Valentine WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, this is professional wrestler Jimmy Bryant, the Boogie Woogie Man. This is Michael Strider, rock and roll photographer. This is Jason Wright. Hey, this is Mikey. Hi, this is Ned Baby. I'm just a balloon with Madison. Hey, this is Jimmy Hart. Hey, this is Frank Braxton from FrackingStone.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we're listening to Frankie Slauson Show on Pioneer 90.1. Uh, uh, now, 
with your roots now, you said you were, you grew up in Texas now. What was life like back when you were growing up? Well, when I was, I, I was a kid growing up in Texas, uh, I was a music junkie because of my, uh, my parents. We had uh, music, radio, we had uh, record players, we had music going at our house all the time. Yeah. And uh, I can say that probably about 19, oh gosh, 56, 57, I heard uh, Chuck Berry on the radio and it, it gave me feelings that I had truly never experienced before and I knew that my life was going to have something to do with music. I didn't know what capacity, but I knew that I was... Uh, steering toward music and I became I learned to play drums by listening to the radio or putting records on and uh, that's how I got started playing drums uh, in high school and uh, was fortunate enough to be with a, a few folks who went on to be pretty big names like Trini Lopez I worked with Trini when I was 16 17 years old he went on to make it real big, so that helped me get a good jump start. I went from Trini to uh, Johnny Rivers and had a great career with John. Uh, I played on most of his hit records, Secret Agent Man and uh, uh, Seventh Son, stuff like that. And he, uh, uh, in fact, he's doing a DVD right now on his life and career, and he's asked if I would sort of be the host of it. and. Uh, do a lot of interviews with people from his past, so looking forward to working on that. But uh, I just, uh, I think I'm lucky that I'm able to make a living doing what I truly love to do, because most people go to work every day at jobs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And uh, I've always said, perish that thought, because I believe that if you can make a living doing what you love to do, you're in the minority, and I am truly in the minority. And I work from the bottom up uh, when I got into the acting business and had quite a bit of success because, I mean, I went on to do tool time, home yeah. improvement with Tim Allen for eight years, and uh, gee whiz, you don't know how much fun that is to go to work. Although, uh, although I did not see you in an, any episode of season five that just came out. <laughs> season uh, five just came out on DVD, and I have not seen you about any episode. I think I did one episode in season five. I didn't. Uh, I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. But to my knowledge, I did at least one each season. Okay. Uh, in the first season, I think we did four or five. Yeah. 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 And then, but, you, uh, then you opened up the second season. And then we opened up the second season. They brought the KMB Construction <laughs> Boys back. So it was uh, it was some of the most fun times I've ever had, not only as an actor but as an entertainer, because I'd go to work and all we would do would be to laugh all yeah. day long. Yeah. And not many people get to go to work and just laugh. Yeah, no so kidding. I uh, I was very fortunate. That's some of the most enjoyable years of my life was the time spent with Tim Allen. Yeah, and, and Hope and Prover will be a, a show uh, that will, will live on forever. I know that much. And, I uh, think it will. Uh, uh, it's funny when we did the final episode, the rap party in uh, uh, at Disney Studios. The vice president of ABC got up. And he said, I don't know if you're aware, but you guys are the next I Love Lucy in reruns. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what? They were right, because yeah. I had no clue the show would have the legs that it's had. And it's still the number one show in reruns. Oh, yes, it is. And uh, people can pick up each uh, season on DVD. Uh, they're up to season five right now. That's great. They got, uh, what, six, seventh, and eighth uh, yet to be released. But, uh, right. I'm sure the sixth one will be released in the next summer. Right? Yeah, I would hope so. Uh, i just uh, real proud of the time that I spent, and hanging out with Tim was yeah. uh, was just, well, it's indescribable, because like I said, we uh, all we did was laugh all day long. Now, uh, 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 each segment that you did in the, in the home improvement, whether it be on tool time or whether it be at, the, at Tim Al Taylor's uh, house, we'll say, uh, now, what, what was your favorite segment? Gosh, you know, it's really 
segment, although I have to say the, uh, the, the episode that we did uh, for Mother's Day yeah. oh, was the the song? pretty cool for me when okay. I read the poem to my mom. Yeah. And uh, my mom had a great line. She said, why did you tell them I was in prison? I said, Mom, it's just a TV show. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, she thought you actually met her. I hurt her feelings a little bit. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I would do that for the world. Who sold this? Uh, who, who sold my thumb back on what the doctor was done or something like that? Brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the poem was, uh, <clears throat> uh, oh, gosh. Because I can remember that thing like it was yesterday. Yeah. Who etched this tattoo in her purple moon moon? My brother. Uh, and, uh, uh, God. <laughs> who posted my bail every time without fail? Mother. Mother. And who rushed to the car with my severed thumb in a jar? Mother. That was father. <laughs> father, oh yeah. But who sewed it back on when the doctor was gone? Mother. Was mother. <laughs> so, yeah, that oh, yeah. Is, uh, Eight wonderful years yeah. right there. Now, Jim is the greatest. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want. Uh, are you very close to him personally, or? You know, I was. We we see each other a couple times a year. I will uh, play golf with him from time to time, and uh, but we don't get to see each other like we did when we were doing yeah. the show. Yeah. He uh, he's a great guy. He just finished a movie called uh, okay. Wild Hogs. Oh, okay. That I thought was that I was going to be in, but it didn't work out.
uh, your horse see it, or what, what's going well, on with that? That's, that's a different DVD. <laughs> okay. The DVD that I just released, in fact, uh, it's at Amazon.com. I yeah. think Borders and some of the bookstores have it, Barnes & Noble. But uh, I know you can get it at uh, Amazon.com, and it's called Bob Dylan, uh, 1966 World Tour, uh, uh, through the camera of Bob Dylan's drummer, Mickey Jones. Okay. And uh, it it just amazing to me, because we had released it before, but and it did well. It did great. Yeah. But what we've done now is we've gone back and we've kind of updated it with some new updates since No Direction Home was out. And we added some uh, very cool extras. We added an interview with... Richard Alderson, who was our sound man on the 66 tour. Okay. We uh, I added an interview I did with Charlie Daniels, because Charlie played on the first and original recordings with Bob from uh, Nashville, the Nashville recordings, okay. and he played with him when he did the, uh, the Johnny Cash show. Gotcha. So there's a lot of good stuff there. I also got interviews with uh, Trini Lopez and Johnny Rivers, and so there's a lot of... Very cool new stuff on the new DVD, and like I said, I know it's available right now at uh, Amazon.com, so you'll have to check that out. Yeah, definitely. It's very cool. I will have to do that because I, like I said, I am a huge fan of yours, and uh, I watch you throughout the years. Uh, and we're all fans of Bob Dylan. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> we are definitely. I know this one guy, Glenn Brockett, who also does interviews with musicians too. He uh, uh, is a huge Bob Dylan fan. Bob is uh, probably, we always used to call him the, he was the poet for a generation. Yeah. I think he's probably the poet for the century. Yeah. Because uh, there's no one else like him. Yeah. No one can duplicate what he does. And uh, he is, he's truly the best at what he does. Now, how, how close are you to uh, Bob? You know, not much anymore. Uh, I used to... Uh, when we were doing the tour, uh, I would spend a lot of time with him, but uh, uh, in the last few years, I, I haven't seen him like I used to. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, my son-in-law, well, my now ex-son-in-law, <laughs> was a professional fighter, a kickboxer. Okay. And uh, I was up at one of his fights in the dressing room, and and I just as I'm about to leave, I hear this... Uh, voice behind me saying, hey, Mickey, I turned, and it's Bob Dylan. <laughs> I, I walked over, I said, Bob, what are you doing here? And he said, that he had the best consummate Bob Dylan reply. Yeah. He said, I don't know. They bring me, and I come. <laughs> Which I thought was a great line. Oh, wow. So I introduced him to my uh, son-in-law, who was just about to go out and fight. Yeah. Uh, my daughter, who was married to him, was there, and I introduced him to my daughter. Okay. I, and then uh, my son uh, walked over very quietly, and he said, Would you, uh, could you introduce Abdul to my dad? Oh, yeah. Because his dad is in one of his corner men, you know, in the ring. Yeah. I said, Absolutely, I should have done that to begin with. I said, Bob, this is, this is Mac, this is Jimmy's uh, dad. And uh, I should have introduced you guys sooner. Well, they chatted for a minute, and after it was all over, about, oh, three days later, I get a call from my son-in-law, and he said, I need to, I just want to thank you for the other night at the fight. And I said, yeah, for what? He said, you introduced my dad to Bob Dylan. I said, well, you know, I should have done that right in the beginning. He said, no, 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 you don't understand. You introduced my dad to Bob Dylan, and it made his life complete. And so we forget sometimes how important something like that can be. Yeah. You know, and uh, it it was one of the largest things that ever happened to him in his life, and, and it was it was such a nothing thing, but it was important to him, and it was a, a really really good thing. And he, I saw him not too long ago. I said, I will never forget that. That's in my memory forever. Oh, yeah. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, you, you made a lasting impact on it. Exactly. I suppose that made you feel very good. Uh, absolutely. You know, when you can do something for somebody that really means something, you uh, you feel great about it. Yeah. And uh, now, have you ever been up to northern Minnesota at all? You know, I was up, I, I flew.
flew in a couple years ago to uh, Duluth. Okay. And I did a celebrity snowmobile event. <laughs> and I'm not a guy that does snow very well. Yeah. You're I like here. Las Vegas when it's 120. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the folks up that love the snow, they don't like the heat. So, yeah. So, uh, but I, I, I went up to this event because I felt like it was for charity. I felt like I should go. Yeah. And they, you know, they outfitted us in all the right clothes and the the Farmer Johns and the the all the mucklucks and all the right clothes. And you know, it was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I didn't get cold. I expected I'd be freezing all the time. Yeah. I never got cold. Uh, a couple of the a couple of uh, animal wildlife guys took me out to a place on the ice to go ice fishing. I had never been ice fishing. I absolutely loved it. We got in this little little teeny little house on the ice, and it, it was toasty warm. We had to take our our coats off <laughs> in the middle of winter to go ice fishing. We're out there with no coats. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, I, I, I've actually I used to work uh, our package shows or tours. We used to base out of Minneapolis with uh, a certain promoter, and I can't remember his name. Oh, Lenny Neymar was his okay. name. I don't know if he's still around or not. But he, uh, when I was with Kenny Rogers in the first edition, he uh, was a promoter that we worked out of, and we spent a lot of time in the Minneapolis St. Paul area uh, because that we used that as a home base for a lot of concert tours. Oh, wow. So. Uh, it's lovely up there. The people are great. Back uh, when we did the snowmobile event, uh, the governor was uh, uh, Jesse Ventura. Oh, yes, yes. And it was very yes. funny because uh, when they introduced me and I got up to say a few words to the folks, I said, you know, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the, unfortunately, the governor, governor could not be here, but the, our lieutenant governor, your lieutenant governor is here, and it was a pleasure to meet her. I, I knew that she would be here because I saw her bodyguards, Hulk Hogan and uh, a couple of those wrestler guys yeah, yeah. that were her bodyguards, and it, it got actually got a pretty good laugh up there, <laughs> so that yeah. was lovely up there. Yeah, right now, uh, well, it's, it's pretty cold up here now, it's uh, getting, I don't know if winter's officially here or not, but the roads are kind of icy right now. Oh, that's not good. No, no. You got to really have to. You got to tell everybody that you have to really be careful on those roads. Yeah, no. I guess everybody up there knows that, and they yeah. know how to do it. In California, if we have anything like that, <laughs> there's so many wrecks because the folks here have no idea yeah. how to handle that kind of weather and that ice. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, uh, no, I really, really enjoyed my time up there, and the thing that was great about it was the people were all friendly and nice and cordial yeah. and I learned to say uh, uh, out and about and, and uh, uh, hey and yeah. oh, well, that's, that's Canada that's now Canadian, yeah. right. but but we're, we're, we're damn close to Canada I learned to say uh, North Dakota, eh? <laughs> North Dakota. <laughs> yeah we're very close to Grand Forks North Dakota that's where I was telling you I was going to be going to Grand Forks yeah. <laughs> so we did a lot of concerts all through North and South Dakota oh. Yeah, I, I wish I would, would ever have the chance to meet you because you you, you seem like a very classy guy, and, and I'm not just saying that to say that I said it because it's out of respect, and it's just you know amazing how you know I said I've done the two, I've done twelve besides you, I've done eleven other interviews with eleven different people, and oh, very cool, and it's uh, words can't explain how I feel. You know? Well, you know what? It's like I said, it goes back to what we were talking about. It's a lot of fun when you get to make your living doing what you love to do. Yeah, yeah. So I urge everybody, you, you know, you have something you want to do, a dream that you think you'd like to try to accomplish, you got to do it. Because uh, uh, if you don't do it, it's only because of your own limitations that you decided, well, I'm not even going to try. Yeah. So you have to try. Uh, I'll just leave you with this. I uh, <clears throat> have just finished writing my book. Uh, I, I started working on this book, I, I'm embarrassed to say, in 1991. All right. It's taken me 15 years, but I just signed a publishing deal, and the book should be out around February, February, March, right in that area. And the title of the book is That Would Be Me, 
because that's the line I used to say on home improvement, and people know me because of that line. I had people come up to me in the airport and say, say that line from home improvement. I said, which line? You know, that would be me. Because when they introduce here's Pete Pilker, KMB Construction, I go, that would be me. Yeah. So it's called That Would Be Me with a subtitle of Rock and Roll Survivor to Actor. So uh, I'll have it up on my website. Everybody can go to my website, which is mickeyjones.com. Yep. But uh, yeah. Borders and Barnes and & Noble and Amazon.com will probably be where you get the best price on it. Yeah. But uh, the book will be out around uh, February, March. So uh, keep your eye peeled for that. I want you to do a read. I'll call you later and then give you a quiz. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I suppose you have to get going here for Well, my, my wife just said they're sitting in there waiting for me to come to dinner. Okay, now, okay. One last thing I want you to do. Uh, yeah, we did about 25 minutes, so we got close. Okay, that's cool. And uh, one last thing I want to do before, before uh, well, I'm going to say thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to uh, interview you. And I hope you uh, ever get it. Did I give you the, the web address to my to the station? No, let me have that. Uh, it's www.pioneer90.org. Okay, and that's... Uh, Pioneer.org. Yeah, uh, Pioneer90.org. Pioneer90.org. And, Pioneer uh, and, and uh, you can listen online. My, I do a show on Tuesday nights, uh, which it will be, well, 7 o'clock p.m. my time, but it'll be like 5 p.m. your time. Yeah, 5 o'clock. And uh, one last thing I always do, and you'll, if you listen to my show any time in the future, you'll, you'll, you'll know this, uh, I, I have people give me a station ID. Uh, basically says who you are, who you listen to, and what station you listen to. You got it. Now, is this, is it Sean? It's Frankie. It's Frankie. Well, Sean's my real name, but Frankie's a, my okay. radio name. And then you get at this and make it work for you. Yeah. Okay. Now, is it Frank? Is there a last name that I Yeah, uh, Frankie, it's Slauson. S-L-A-W-S-O-N. Flossum. Yeah, Flossum. Okay. All right. All right, it's 90.1? Yep. Pioneer. Pioneer 90.1. And you, that's how you call it, Pioneer 90.1? Yep, yeah, that's what I call it. Okay, you ready? Yep. Hey, this is Mickey Jones, and you're listening to Frankie Flossum right here on Pioneer Radio 90.1. All right, man. And I, like I said, uh, if you uh, did, don't get a chance to listen to this interview, I am putting it on my MySpace page, too, so I'll just give you my... Well, you probably already have my MySpace address already, I think. Yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah, you can. It'll be on there probably as of tonight. Very cool. All right. Well, I'm glad it worked out, man. I'm glad I was able to do it, and uh, I'm sorry it was such a mix-up. Oh, no, that's, going, that's, but that's all right. right. You, if you knew how slammed I was on time right now, you would... Yeah. You, you'd actually play the violin for Yeah, me. if I if I give you my address, uh, I'll send it to my, I'll, I'll give you an email tonight. Uh, uh, could you send me an autograph picture? Absolutely. All right, cool. You email me and, and just 